Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Life After Lockup, Season 5, Episode 41. Listen, I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. Blair, you ready to walk us through this episode? Let's go. Let's go. So we start with Daniel and Bianca. Mm -hmm. So um, they were in Love After Lockup. A lot of these people were in in previous Love After Lockups. Okay. But they were in the most recent one. Um, Daniel was in prison for five years. He met Bianca online. Mm -hmm. She, of course, uh, got into an accident. Um, Her friend was driving under the influence and she wanted to find somebody who was convicted of being driving under the influence so that's how she found daniel okay um the closest um she's gotten to seeing the d is a drawing that he did for her she okay. is really looking forward to getting it popping with her mate of course so they get to the apartment um he's just kind of looking around checking things out he's like it's definitely better than prison mm-hmm. he does notice that there's a bo- bottle opener on the fridge okay um, he says that he's a little bit anxious being out. Um, then they end up cuddling up and kissing. Um, before he was locked up, he was struggling with addiction. Mm-hmm. So it had kind of probably been a little bit more than five years since he had been with the woman. And um, they decide to go ahead and consummate their apartment. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next, or Chris in their apartment. So it's the next day. Bianca thinks Daniel is a bit skinnier than what she would have imagined. She kind of jokes that he catfished her a little bit. Okay. Um, she tells him that the intimacy was good, um, but then she tells us that it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great either. He just wanted to put it in, pretty much. I mean, I've been in prison for five plus years. So they still need to find out if he can live there or if he needs to report to the halfway house. Mm-hmm. Um, she's saying she would be so upset if he had to go there. She spent over $8,000 to be here. Well, you should have checked first or listen to your friend yeah your friend said hey he may have to stay in a halfway house this is not something that um you have to just there's not steps that you could just skip you Mm -hmm. have to make sure that you check in and things of that nature talk to your parole officer but she wanted to as an immature person wanted to spend eight thousand dollars nobody told her to do that (laughs) you know what i'm saying actually her friends are trying to convince her not to do it right and that kind of pushed her to do it so so like i don't feel sorry for her and that's kind of a theme in this episode people not checking with the authorities in place just to make sure that things can go off smoothly yeah um but anyway so he made her some breakfast um she tells him that yeah you better do this every morning i oh, i don't like that type of talk i'm just for. like what what are we being sassy for is she think it's cute or something mm-hmm. um she asks him to get her some coffee and he's like i'm sitting down like i made you breakfast go ahead and get up and get your coffee i already got the coffee going mm-hmm. um and now she's pissed off because she's like you know do you know how much i've done for you and, and you can't even get me a cup of coffee mm. and he's like don't throw that in my face like mm-hmm. that and don't manipulate me in that way. He asked her, why did you do that in the first place? And she said, because she loved him and he was like, okay, so don't do that again. And they end up kissing. Mm-hmm. First of all, like shout out to Daniel for, for, for standing his ground and actually being direct. Yes. And she tried to gaslight him saying like, Oh my goodness. Like he's like tripping over the coffee. Yeah. She's like, why are you so triggered? Yeah. I was just like, you're no, a child. no, you're very much a child. And the thing about the theme of, of these type of shows, which is crazy, which is love of love during lockup or, or life uh, after lockup, all these type of things, they are with these people and they want to make these people kind of like their slaves. It's kind of weird. It's, it's like very weird. it's like you get this person, you fall in love with this person, you you're in prison mentally with this person, and then when they get out, it's like now I have my own pet or my own. You want to be their warden, exactly? And mm-hmm. you're like, hey, make me some coffee, and I'm just like, why? Yeah, like if he made breakfast and things of that nature. I'm not even saying that it's a bad thing, but my thing is, if he said no, get up and make your own coffee. I don't even think he said it rudely. I don't even think he said it like in a mean way. I think he just said like, go ahead and make your own coffee. She was the one who made it weird. Yeah, she did. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it, it she, it's just a weird interaction. And I think it's weird too because she expected him to jump whenever she said jump. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, well, I don't know because people different, but for me at least, like. I my first thought wouldn't be hey can you get me some coffee my first thought would be I want some coffee let me go get some coffee Mm -hmm. (laughs) but she has in her head that because she did all these things for him Mm -hmm. if she tells him to jump he needs to say how high and I'm glad he put her or checked her and basically be like that's not what this is facts so next we go to Troy and Zaria Uh I wasn't expecting to see them but hello Mm -hmm. yes so they are arguing about being late to somewhere Um, apparently Z's sister Zion still lives there Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And Zion talks about how her heart drops when she hears them arguing. Mm -hmm. And she honestly feels bad for Troy a lot of the time because he is just sometimes in her ways. Well, that that already lets me know who be hollering most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Troy and Z, they're actually headed to work. Um, Z started a nonprofit that offers mental health services to children and people who have previously been incarcerated, like Mm -hmm. at-risk youth. Um, So this is an organization that they've created themselves. She was talking to him, I guess, before he got released to figure out what would he want to do once he gets out. Yeah. And this is something he wanted to do. So she made it happen for them. Okay. So they, um, they arrive to the office, they meet the staff. It's only about like two people there. I think it was, it was I think probably, Two or three? Yeah, yeah, about close to that. Okay. Um, And so they have like a mental health counselor, like a service coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, So he shares with them because one of the ladies asked, you know, what exactly were you in jail for? And he said, you know, for robbery and possession of a firearm. Mm -hmm. So um, the mental health counselor is just worried about the unknown. She doesn't know about his work ethic, his mission, and just kind of how he will come into the fold into the already going business. Yeah. So she shows him around. She shows him his actual like um, office that he'll be working in. And then they have a meeting. So Troy is director of community engagement. So she wants him to build an outreach team to check in with their clients and just Mm -hmm. kind of follow up with people. Troy thinks that he'll be successful running um, this business because he feels like running the streets is not that much different. Okay. Um, In gangs, you have to have people do different tasks and jobs and make sure that they, you know, get whatever they need to do done Mm -hmm. so z does have something that she's hiding from him but she's not quite ready to tell him okay so moving on um she's talking about she wants them to start planning their wedding Um, about troy yes okay um they get married um during the pandemic so they had to stand six feet apart they couldn't kiss Mm -hmm. so it was not like the dream wedding that she was hoping for okay z decides this is the time to tell him what she's been hiding him wow so she got a text message shows him so apparently the rent for the office hadn't been paid for may and june Mm. um she said that basically there was an issue with the invoice and the contract apparently the way she explained it was that um they're getting grants because this is a nonprofit Mm. in order to operate their business um but i guess with the end invoice like it's like a 30 day waiting period Mm -hmm. and that was something that she didn't know that it would be that long um so so she had to use the money to pay for the staff not even pay them yet um just to make sure the staff had their salaries Mm -hmm. and behind on rent is is what the outcome was okay so she's telling him that they can't be in the office until she gets this figured out they have about seven thousand dollars in debt Mm. um and by next month um she only paid for their like housing where they live up to this month so next month they're going to be out of money for rent as well wow so Troy is like, I might as well get back in the streets because we need to get some money and I'm not just going to sit here and just like chill and talk in a bed with you about it. Like mm-hmm. I need to get to moving and figure out how we're going to get this money. So he walks out and he's like, he needs to fend for them. Troy calls a friend to come pick him up to figure some things out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts, I think it's kind of crazy how Z would walk him into the office and show him his cubicle just to be like, we can't really go back there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and until they, the rent is paid. I'm just like, what are we doing here? <laughs> so that was odd. Um, and then I also feel like Troy, like I don't want him to jump back into old habits because it's quick money. Cause that could lead him into a situation to where he's back in prison. Um, so I'm just like cooler heads. Let's try to prevail. So, well, who, who is the cooler head? Troy, uh, but it's I, hard to tell now. It's, my whole thing is this. Y'all are in this, y'all run this nonprofit together. Mm. First of all, why y'all in business together? When literally in the scene before, you got Z sister saying that they argue all the time. Mm-hmm. So y'all can't even function in when y'all not working together. Mm-hmm. So I'm supposed to believe that when y'all argue all night or argue in that day that y'all supposed to come to work and actually function and actually be able to do things. Only thing that y'all was prepared for was rolling that blunt so y'all could smoke it after. Pretty much. <laughs> Everything else, y'all, y'all wasn't prepared for. Mm-hmm. Z, I want to know. What happened to the money? I want to know, since you set it up, how come you didn't see these these stumbling blocks coming forward? And um, I mean, not coming forward, but but actually coming so you could actually know how to prepare for it. It just seemed like it, it seemed like they were just doing things that didn't really prepare for it. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, to actually put someone else's livelihood 
uh, in jeopardy because the staff don't know nothing. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, like, of course, now she's yelling at him saying, what are you going to do wearing all black with, with a paint do-rag? Sometimes you just got to get away from the problem. Mm-hmm. And so far, Troy sees Z as a problem because he's like, I can't trust her. You hiding this from me, right? Number one, you cheated on me, so I already don't trust you, right? And then you putting this on me, so it's like you keep hiding stuff. So, like, how can I even operate or even if we was to get out of this storm, how do I even trust you after the fact? And then you want to talk to me about planning a wedding. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, like, I understand where Troy coming from. Right. So, next, we move on to Teeny and Rob. So, Rob has been out for about six weeks. Yeah. Um, they both say that they're happy. They took a trip to Florida as a family, and he feels like he's been adjusting pretty well being out of prison since he was in for 16 to 17 years. Okay. So, they are moving into a new house. Um, he is putting the cameras up, but this is more about security instead of him checking in and speaking through the cameras like take, he was in prison. Take them cameras down, bro. So, um, Teeny did end up seeing the tattoo of his ex on his arm. Mm-hmm. She says sometimes she brings it up in arguments to be petty, but she knows that they both love people before. Like, I mean, she got her kids to show the proof of her love before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really something that she's not too pressed about. Okay. So Teeny planned a welcome home party for him so they can get their friends and family together. Mm-hmm. Um, Rob says that he has a little bit of social anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, the kids feel like he has just fit right back in when he came home. And I really like Teeny's kids. Like they just seem like really nice, like respectable kids. Okay. Um, it's uh, so the party was supposed to start at one thirty. It's 2.10, the guests are late, so they're starting to make phone calls to try to see where people are at. Yeah. So she makes a call to someone, and the lady's talking about she has to take her daughter to gymnastics, but she couldn't come today because she had an eye infection or something like that mm-hmm. the day before. I'm just like, excuses. Wow. <laughs> she said she can't see, Blair. But she's taking her daughter to gymnastics. Okay. So clearly she's not at home resting. I, my daughter, I ate. My daughter got to go to gymnastics, okay? She couldn't miss a day? You want you want someone else's kid to miss a day for this guy? Yes, for the party that they invited them to. Would, you would think people would try to? Would you do that? No, you wouldn't. I probably would if it was a close friend. Stop of mine. it! I would if it was a close friend of mine. But at the same time, I'm just like, sorry, I don't, I don't really support prison uh, celebrations not, and situations. We're, we're not missing the because I paid probably a week for this little for like for like my big kid to be flipping and things of that nature. We're not going to do this like welcome home party because y'all playing house and this is your little prisoner husband and things of that nature. Okay, I gotta go to gymnastics and watch my uh, six foot four kid try to do flip and okay. try to make the Olympics. <laughs> I told him to put a basketball in her hand but she don't want to do that okay Okay, she want to flip so i gotta watch my tall ass daughter flip you get what i'm saying so sorry i'm i'm not doing it i'm with her okay i'm with her i'm not and then rob ends up calling his brother and he's asking his brother what's going on his brother's like he's not feeling well i guess he was out partying and stuff like that the day before oh um at least that's what I got from it. Maybe I'm wrong. I no, think he said he was I recovering. Think, I think he said he was sick and he's recovering. And I did not know that was his brother. I thought that was just another friend. Oh, okay. It was just another friend. I was like, yeah, maybe I'm making assumptions. Anyway, you are. Um, so he was just like, oh, I thought you'd be feeling better today. And he was like, nah, like he's not going to be able to make it. Yeah. So um, he says this is kind of like visitation. Like the only people that really showed up for him were Teeny and the kids. Not right here. No, this is poor party planning. Mm. This sounds like something that was on the whim. And you was like, hey, we doing something this Saturday. Um, come through so we can have a little get together and things like that. This is not a real party get thing or a get together thing. Because I'm like, if if for one, people were late or people just didn't show up, it just seemed like it was last minute and it was poor planning on Teeny part, in my opinion. Possibly, possibly. So currently, um, Teeny and Rob's mom are on good terms, okay. but she says that may be subject to change. Uh huh. <laughs> so Teeny's mom arrives as well as one of Teeny's friends, mm-hmm. and all of them are pretty much asking, "Where's all the people at?" And they're just like main show so um apparently rob saw his mom a few times um since he's been released Mm -hmm. but the mom has ended up getting mad at rob um and everyone can pretty much see that rob really wants his mom's support yeah um the kids they end up bringing him a cake and the daughter smashes the cake in his face you know Mm. to be funny nice um then rob's mom arrives so she comes in hugging everybody Mm mm-hmm Mom tells Rob that she doesn't like how he has been treating her. Like, she feels like he's been distant with her. Mm-hmm. 
And Rob is trying to explain to her that, you know, people just don't necessarily understand like what I went through as far as being incarcerated for so long. Mm-hmm. And he's also older now and has certain responsibilities that he needs to take care of his family. Mm-hmm. And the mom says, well, when Teeny won't be here, I'll be here. What that mean? And Teeny's like, why would not I be here? What happened? <laughs> and mom, she's like, I don't know. I just made a comment. I'm just trying to talk to my son. Basically, get out the conversation. Mm. And so Teeny's like, okay, I'm going to go up and get a drink. And then the mom tells her, okay, have a nice day. And then Teeny, like, comes back and is kind of in the mom's face and is just like, what is your problem with me? Mm-hmm. Then the mom swings on Teeny. Yeah, and then yeah. Teeny gets to swinging back. And I said, Teeny, I hope some of them punches landed. Because <laughs> mm. that mama is a uh, hellion. What are your thoughts? My thoughts were... Um, basically most of my thoughts i'm just like people come to parties people don't it can be last minute or it cannot be last minute some people just flaky like that um but i also feel like with teeny and rob like um when it comes to rob's mom the mom has always seemed very selfish to me and always seemed Mm -hmm. very like money driven and money hungry when it comes to her relationship with rob Mm -hmm. um so with her saying like, Oh, you've been distant, you all this type of stuff. And she's like, you uh, just got out of jail and started taking care of another family. I was just like, uh, yeah, my family. Yeah. <laughs> like mom, like I'm not going to sit up here and you know, I, I understand some people take care of their parents, you know, if they're really in a situation of need, I don't know his mom's situation like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but mom, it seems like you should be able to fend for yourself in the world. Um, do you need your son to take care of you or do you just want your son to take care mm-hmm. of you? So, um, yeah, I think that Rob is prioritizing his life in the correct way. And the mom needs to get with the program. She's like, and the fact that she's like talking about, yeah, if Teeny's not here, I'm going to be here. He's married to this woman and she was in there basically with him locked up for the past 16 years with the kids with the kids going to see him every weekend so i'm just like yeah she's underestimating um teeny's loyalty and i guess their relationship Mm -hmm. um but i think she does that to get a rise out of teeny as well but i i'm just so over the mom i'm just like she just needs to not be invited to any more family events because she like you want to have your son like isolated and only taking care of you and all of his money and resources going to you Mm -hmm. but that's not going to happen he got married he has a family and he is taking care of his responsibilities and as a parent i would think that you would be proud of him for doing that but apparently not no of course not yeah and 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 you have to put yourself in her shoes this is not no as a parent type of thing like she is the type of person to where she she see her uh, her son in jail and the one thing that she was talking about when when they was on the previous seasons was hey the ex was taking care of me Mm-hmm. And things like that. I drove up here. Look at the car where you driving, and I barely made it up here. Things of that nature. Mm-hmm. First of all, let's start with this. I do not remember Teeny having tattoos on her neck mm-hmm. last last time I seen her. I was like, she looked a little bit more tatted, but maybe you know, memory. Mm-hmm. Two, you got to cut your mother off mm-hmm. because you let the mother of your kids get hit in front of them, mm-hmm. and it's just that plain and simple. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a father. And be a a, a, a a guide to these kids that's 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 not yours to the point where you're yelling through the camera, hey, stop eating that fruit roll up on the couch. Right? <laughs> right. Then you have to protect the household when your mother swings on your wife, the mother of your kids. Right. You get what I'm saying? I remember when Teeny first pulled up to the to the jail and things like that. She left her kid in the back seat. Yeah. To, to run to you. Mm-hmm. So there, I don't think there will be a time to where Teeny is going to just up and leave um, and things of that nature. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know the girl. Mm-hmm. But one thing I do know is that your kids was there, right? The kids that he claimed mm-hmm. and your mother swung on their mother. Yeah. How are you going to explain that to your kids that are coherent, that can understand what they saw? Mm-hmm. You can't, so you got to cut your mother off. And this wasn't no small swing. But all everybody in, in that scene took a bump. Rob took a bump. The mother head took a bump against because Rob trying to break it up and things like that. And and my thing is, Rob, let me give you an F for your breaking up skills. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible. You don't break it up like this and lean and things like that, and you still get hit. You start hitting everybody. Oh, okay. That's how you break it up. Uh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. See, look, I hit three people right okay. there and there, right? <laughs> so you just start knocking folks out. <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, okay. You see what I mean? Like, this will be my party. But that's all I have to say about them. All right. Yeah. So we move on to Justine and Michael. I thought it was really nice to see them again. I do enjoy watching their story. They in Vegas. Yes. So they have a six-month-old daughter. Yeah. And um, they also have another baby.
be on the way. Yeah. Uh, they also have their kids from their previous relationships living with them in this big house that they bought in Vegas, mm-hmm. which um, Michael says that their budget is smaller than an ant's booty hole. And I was just like, I could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so he ended up getting a day job. I think he said doing like some type of contracting or construction, something like that. Trucking, like, like, like basically a- like moving company moving company yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay um justine is pregnant with baby number nine they are at the ultrasound and they find out that it is a boy not right here i don't know you have it down but i will uh, bring it up now she says she's not telling her family yeah and they're not telling nobody what are your thoughts on that um i'm fine with it i guess i'm not i guess i'm fine with it i'm not why not um number one I understand they have a lot of kids. Yeah. Right. Uh, how many kids was it all together? It was like eight. Uh, it was like eight or something like that. They mm-hmm. said eight is great and nine is fine or something mm-hmm. like that. That they were saying. That's a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. And to make it seem like, or oh, how I was raised, I was raised that kids are a blessing. Mm-hmm. To hide it, I feel like it. Sh- I feel like hiding it make it seem like. And I understand she said that we don't want the drama. We don't want nobody in our business. But I feel like kids is a great thing, especially since y'all married, that it should just be celebrated at all times and things like that. And I know with some people's family, some people feel like, like, you know what, I can't even tell my family, like, what's going on. And I feel like you may just have to cut that person off completely. But I feel like a, a child should not be something that should be hidden, especially if y'all married and especially since y'all, like, are a union that y'all basically blended families and things like that. Mm-hmm. Listen here, we about to have baby number eight after we just had baby number seven six months ago. They have baby number nine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Number nine and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it is what it is. This is my family. I'm doing whatever I can as a man, moving company by day, whatever it is. I don't know if he's still rapping or things of that nature. I know he's definitely not. Remember back in the uh, seasons ago to where his friend was basically saying, hey, man, you got to take off that wedding ring. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Because, you know, you, you're not going to attract the audience you want to be a successful rapper. Trust me, he got the daddy body. He got the husband body. He got all the above. He he's taken. He's taken. Mm-hmm. You know, he's taken for. So I just don't feel, I just didn't feel right about her feeling like they have to hide the baby mm-hmm. and things like that. I just felt like, hey, if it's if, if it's something that y'all really want it and you're not guilty about it, share it. Mm-hmm. That's just my opinion. Well, if they watching the show, they know now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, after the last baby, she was advised not to have any more children. Mm. Um, she's had multiple C-sections. And they said, like, after the third one, they don't recommend that you have any more because it can cause more complications. So okay. this is going to be her fifth C-section if she has this baby. That's interesting. Um, so the doctor is talking to her about, um, so after this baby, we need to actually talk about, like, permanent contraception yeah so whether she gets her tube tied or he gets a vasectomy and he says he ain't getting no vasectomy he wants everything to still be able to work down there just in case i leave Um, you (laughs) (laughs) um, but they're letting her know and stressing to her that this is a high risk pregnancy yeah and they ask her to get her will in order just in case um you know something may happen to her and if her husband may not make the decisions that she would Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to her life and choosing herself or the baby or life support yeah. Um, so that way she has that in writing. So she's talking about how she wouldn't want to be on life support and she would want him to save the baby. She feels like as a mother, as a parent, like she would um, basically give her life for her kids. Okay. So uh, she's asking and wondering how much rest she should be getting. She's been out of breath. She's been tired. And the doctor is telling her, have your kids help you. You know, you got all them kids in the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> have them kids help you with stuff around the house and go to the ER if you feel like there's any problem with your body. Yeah. Uh, Justine didn't think about her health when she got pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, so now things are kind of settling in and she is a bit scared about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, she always would want to choose her kids um, over herself when it comes to life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I say all that because I set y'all up. Now, mm-hmm. now y'all fell for my trap. Okay. Because <laughs> now the real discussion about to start do you find Blair because I got to talk to Blair because Blair don't know what's here right okay, yeah do you find them having a knife baby irresponsible on their part mm, not necessarily not necessarily no. help me and I guess my thing is like 
if you're not asking for anybody else to step in to finance your kids' lives or mm-hmm. to feed them or to clothe them, then you're doing the best with what you got. And it seems like their kids and their family is happy and healthy. Yeah. Then they should be able to have as many kids as they want to as long as they can sustain it. So even if budget is tight or, or things like that, um, just just by the simple fact of is it respons- irresponsible to have nine children? Mm-hmm. No, they're making it work for their family and they're living, you know, the best life that they can for their family. Now, it was irresponsible for her understanding her situation yeah. or knowing her situation. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, and um, being told that she shouldn't have another child and deciding to get pregnant anyway. And he even said something like, oh, like you was tracking the ovulation. You knew what you was doing basically mm-hmm. about wanting mm-hmm. to get pregnant again. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I think that is irresponsible that she would put herself in a situation to where you were. Thankfully, luckily, able to have your um, fourth C-section child Mm -hmm. and then um, you go ahead and put yourself in another situation to where you might not be here for any of your children or your husband. Yeah. I felt like that was kind of a selfish decision on her part. And that's and that's what my question was geared to. Okay. Basically, based on what you told us, you told us that the doctor said that, hey, usually it's not safe to have three C-sections. Once you have a C-section, you're not going back to a natural birth. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, hey, listen, three is the number, Mm -hmm. right? This is the fifth. Yeah. Right. So now it goes back to what I was talking about before. Hey, you shouldn't even hide your baby and things and and be able to share the joy. And I'm like, hey, I said that to basically set it up to basically be like, maybe you hiding it because maybe you were irresponsible Mm -hmm. and things like that. And now we're having discussions that we really don't have to have. And, And when I say don't have to have, I'm 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 sure people should have things in place. But now the real risk of you not not making it is real Mm -hmm. because we put ourselves in this position to where it's like, hey, get a will in place. Right. Let us know what Hey, you don't want to be on life support. And now I even feel like and this will be kind of mean to say Mm -hmm. because I'm not a parent. So I I don't have that attachment to a kid. I only got attachment to my nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Right now with a knife kid, if something was to happen to you. You're telling me, save the kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's to me, maybe irresponsible is the wrong word, but I, I think it's a little like, hey, that's kind of like, like, you're kind of numb to the situation. You know, I understand you're a mom and you feel like you have to save your kid. You made a decision that you will live, that you will lay your life down for your kids. Commendable, right? Mm-hmm. But hey, we put ourselves in this situation. After the doctors say three C sections and quit, mm-hmm. right? And now they coming up here doing a slideshow of basically how like how twos will get tied and things like that or what we need to do. And now you're telling me if something was to happen to you based off a based off of our irresponsible decision, save the baby and not you. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You're gonna live with this decision mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're gonna help me raise these eight kids. Yeah. And that's how I felt about it. If I can give her a little bit of bail. Give her a little bit of bail to get out of jail. Um, she says she's thirty six. Ooh, okay. So she is pretty young. Um, I guess in my, you know, standards of basically to the fact that she I guess she was having kids at a younger age, um, yeah. and she's thirty six. She's still able technically to have children Mm -hmm. so she probably wants to have kids you know as long as she can while her body is still able to do this great thing yeah and it might just not have clicked in her head that okay i'm 36 but i've had all these c-sections so i really shouldn't have any more kids Mm -hmm. but the hardware is there i want more kids so let me just try to have a baby but like i agree i think that is probably irresponsible and selfish in a Mm -hmm. way um but i can understand her being 36 and wanting to continue to be able to bring life into the world you know even with eight already yeah yeah oh man well Mm -hmm. hopefully that bell gets you out of jail (laughs) okay (laughs) let's move on so next we've got britney and karak okay so they are engaged they were both previously incarcerated Mm -hmm. he was released about seven months ago and she was released a little over a year ago okay so they are moving to houston not planning to move to houston they done packed the house up and they're getting the car ready so they can make that drive deposit already (laughs) given away (laughs) yes um we also find out that karak's mom and brother are moving to houston so this is a family affair okay so karak gets a call from um the parole office Mm -hmm. and he is informed that it's up to the state of texas on whether 
whether or not they will approve or deny his move. Mm-hmm. And they have not received, received approval from Texas for them to travel or relocate there yet. Wow. He is upset yelling on the phone talking about he quit his job Mm -hmm. and the person on the phone is talking about well it sounds like you probably shouldn't have made those decisions until you got approval you made a lot of decisions brother (laughs) so um the parole office talking to britney now because he's clearly frustrated there's really no talking to him Mm -mm. and she um they said that they are going to send a request to texas to get Mm -hmm. things expedited but it still could take up to 30 days to get an answer um apparently virginia okayed him to move so maybe that's why he thought that it wouldn't be an issue Mm -hmm. um and i don't know how much he knew about texas having to approve or deny it but i feel like he knew if i had to go by gut feeling i feel like he knew and he was like virginia said it was okay so it was probably fine okay um, next, um, the, uh, Brittany is explaining to them, like, we really don't have anywhere to yeah. stay. We're going to be homeless. We gave up our home. So they're like, we can give you a government provided motel room. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get that coordinated for you guys. Well, well, Blair, he tells us why he did what he did. He said, Hey, we've been on good behavior on parole. Yeah. We've been checking in. We've been doing our part. So of course they're going to approve us. Mm-hmm. So it, I don't even think he did the research on Texas part. I think to him, he just like, we've been good. We are basically good behavior parole. Or we are good behavior probation people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And Virginia already approved us. We're good. And I, and truth be told, I really think one conversation, not two, one conversation with his parole officer would have slowed this whole process down. Yeah. And I think he just basically put the cart in front of the horse and now he mad. He over here talking about he feeling like a failure. The the his wife or, or girl whatever talking about you didn't fail us, it's okay. And that's what he's like, I know how the government motels be. I ain't trying to stay there. I gotta do something for my family. And I'm like, you did enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Maybe you need to do nothing uh-huh. and actually wait. And now you got your mama and like your brother moving down there and you potentially he won't even be down there maybe what is your thoughts on them yeah i just thought he put the car before the horse i think a lot of these people especially when it comes to parole like or maybe not even that because i I put bianca in this category too Mm. like they don't consider the fact that they have to answer to somebody yeah and maybe because they're in their free world they think that they are free to do whatever they please Mm -hmm. um but no you're still checking in with somebody and you still need to get approval Mm -hmm. and for some reason that just does not seem to click with people they can they think they can you know circumvent the system and do whatever they want to do but the reality of the situation is you can't and you need to wait for somebody to give you the okay fact so Mm-hmm. next we move on to kim and joey okay so joey's been home from prison for two months first month was kind of rough we saw that in the last season we did uh kim and joey's mom are cleaning out the dad's garage um they are planning to buy a house um but in order to buy the house kim is trying to sell some baby stuff maybe mm-hmm. do some garage sales um she's going to pick up a lot more shifts at work and she's also trying to make joey get a job first of all the father like get that boy out my garage <laughs> okay he already took my bike okay <laughs> so she is um tracking joey Mm -hmm. on the phone and he is where he says he is um was going to be okay joey is riding with the boys he talks about how he is in full daddy mode he takes them to school he picks them up Mm -hmm. he talks with them he gets them dinner like he is a dad for real i know what joey's trying to do Mm -hmm. he's trying to do this daddy thing to stop him or slow him down from getting a real job Mm -hmm. listen here get a job joey (laughs) okay Okay, get a job (laughs) Uh uh-huh uh, Kim and Joey apparently were having sex in 2018. Mm-hmm. She got pregnant. He went to prison, but she was also having sex with her ex. Joey thinks that he could be Kason's father, the mm-hmm. five-year-old. Um, So he bought a paternity test. He's over there asking the boy, don't you think you look like me? Man, listen, Joey's funny. <laughs> So Joey asked him about doing a DNA test. It's been five and a half years and they have really not known the truth. Yeah. I thought Kim would have been like, I know who the baby daddy is. She don't know. She don't know. She really don't know. Yeah. So um, she's like, okay, but she's like, is, are you sure this is something what you're going to do? This might open up a can of worms. And he's like, I want to know the truth. Everybody deserves to know the truth. That's what Joey said. Right. So they take the DNA test. They don't tell the little boy what it's for. They're like, we're checking for COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and they send the test off to find out whether or not that is his biological son. And um, I only got something small to say. Um, I'm not a fan of neither of them, mm-hmm. but I'm definitely not a fan of Kim because she literally said out her mouth that, Hey, like who really needs to know out of sight, out of mind, basically like who needs to know the truth? 
Yeah. She basically like Joey stepped in. Joey kind of know the situation. Um, but you got a whole child. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? And for her to even try to sweep it under the rug knowingly. Yeah. And to and to knowingly like not get the results or knowingly get the the actual proof of who's the father and just basically be like, well, out of sight, out of mind. No, I'm not a fan of that at all. I agree. That's real grimy. That's how you get people that's 40, 50 years old talking about they the man that they thought was their dad their whole life isn't actually their dad. And that's because their mom is grimy. Facts. Mm-hmm. Anything else on this episode, Blair? That's all I got. What is your thoughts on the overall episode? Good or bad? Good. I think it was good. I think this going to be a good season too. Hopefully y'all join us. Hopefully y'all subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. We'll be back next week with the next episode. Y'all be good. Bye.